Pascal Verlein was a talent in F1 which only lasted two seasons. He scored Manor's second ever set of points besides Jules Bianca and scored on two occasions for Sauber in 2017 when their car was at the back of the grid and his teammate Marcus Ericsson who had been in F1 at that point for three years couldn't score a single one. Just what did happen to the talent which would be Pascal Verlein? Now Pascal was a German Mauritius driver who for the most part had a very successful karting career. He may not have had the career of a Max Verstappen or Charles Leclerc but still had a very good one nonetheless. He managed to get 81 podiums and 44 wins in his 4 year period in karting between 2005 and 2009 in which he may have been possibly overlooked compared to others. Straight after his karting career, he started a season in the ADAC Formal Masters Championship in Germany, which is about the equivalent to Formula Ford in the UK. In his two-year period in ADAC, he managed to win the championship in his second season after gathering up eight victories that year. He later competed in the F3 Euro Series for the next two years. The championship at the time had the likes of Felix Rosenqvist, Daniel Kvyat, Antonio Giovinazzi and Carlos Sainz. He would finish second in his first season, and for the second season, well, it didn't last long. He would start the year at Monza for the triple round header. However, at that weekend, he would take two pole positions, two fastest laps, three podiums, and one win. After this weekend, he would no longer be in the championship because Mercedes made him the first junior driver in their program and sent him to DTM. By this point, Pascal had some pretty big hype around him for Mercedes to pick him up and it didn't end there. He would compete in DTM for the next three years in which, yep, you guessed it, won the championship in 2015 to be the youngest ever DTM champion at the age of 21. At this point, Pascal showed he had speed and it would only take a couple years in the championship to start winning. 2016 would be the year he would start his short F1 journey. For 2016, it was announced he would be the manor driver for them after Mercedes would back him for the seat after striking a deal with the backmarker team. For that season, they would take the Works Championship winning Mercedes engines after recently competing with the old 2014 Ferrari power units, and Mercedes allowed them to use their wind tunnel in return for them to sign Verlein. 2016 was going to be a year to see if Manor could bridge the gap to the midfield and if Pascal Verlein would be any good in Formula 1. Now for Manor, it wasn't a great year for them, a lot of the excitement to see them improve didn't really come into reality. They were still at the back of the field and the car may have been able to bridge the gap slightly if he ignored the 2015 car. For Pascal, it was rather a good year for him, he would score Manor's second set of points ever by getting a 10th place in Austria after an amazing qualifying. He would also have a few other moments of brilliance throughout the year by getting into Q2 in Bahrain and having some other amazing qualifiers. For that year, he did have two teammates of Rio Harianto and Esteban Ocon. Harianto didn't show much pace over Verline for his time at the team and didn't outrace him once if he ignored retirements. At Ocon's time, it was a bit closer, but Pascal still had the upper edge over him due to having that experience. 2017 would start weird for Pascal as his team in Manor would no longer be able to compete in Formula 1 due to financial issues, so he would no longer have a seat at the time of the news. There was also other major news of Nico Rosberg retiring from Mercedes leaving a seat open there however. Unfortunately for him he wouldn't get that seat due to inexperience which is fair from Mercedes but if you look at his history he would often win in his second year. Now Pascal could have gone one of both ways, either joining Sauber for 2017 who would be a backmarker or join Force India, a well established midfielder who would often score podiums. Unfortunately for him, he didn't have a say in it and Ocon would take the seat at Force India despite not beating Pascal. To understand the reason from Force India, at his time testing for them prior to Formula 1, he didn't make a great name for himself, with Olav Moll, Dutch TV presenter, stating Pascal would tell Force India how to run their team and be very immature behind the scenes. It was also rumoured that he wouldn't be a team player a lot of the time and have a too big of an ego. Dave Ryan, the Manor Race Director, however stated Verlein is nothing like that and people have the wrong impressions of him. He would also state that he never saw a hint of arrogance from him. Looking at them two points, it would make sense that the fact he did have a bit of an ego prior to Formula 1 in testing which ruined his chances for Force India and later calmed down at Manor with Dave Ryan there. However, he's already burned this bridge at this point and had to stay with Sauber for 2017. Now you must be wondering, he must have had a pretty bad year in 2017 to not get a seat for 2018. Well, no, he didn't. He would score Sauber's only points for them on two occasions that season and beat his teammate of Ericsson in the head-to-heads by 11-7. However, looking at this point of view doesn't really show the full picture. If you look at his teammate of Ericsson, 
You may know he was mean for being a pretty bad driver in Formula 1, probably the worst before Latifi joined. So his 11-7 record wasn't all too great and his average gap to him was around half a tenth. If you compare this to Leclerc's gap to him the year after, he would have a record of 17-4 and be on average 5 tenths quicker. However, this doesn't merit Verline being kicked out of the sport to never return. In the end, he was the only driver out of his teammates to score points and was never beaten in the head-to-heads. He showed glimpses of brilliant pace in qualifying, but it just wasn't enough. Verline stated a few years later he didn't have the right mindset for Formula 1 and found it hard to switch on when being at the back of the grid. So maybe if he did get that Mercedes seat, we would see a whole new picture. Now his career has rather mellowed off in Formula E, being a mid-table runner after a two-year stint being Ferrari's development driver. Was it his ego and immaturity which caused burning of bridges to be his reasoning he didn't return? Was it his bad mindset? Was it just bad luck? Unfortunately, I don't think we'll see Pascal in Formula 1 again.